Hi, Claire. Good morning again, Kevin. How are you going? I'm good. How are you? Actually, it's afternoon. Definitely. Uh, yeah. for you and <laughs> Where are you? Where is how's that? the conference been? Say that again. How has the conference been? You were pretty busy yesterday looking at the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was it was good. It was good. Um, yeah, we didn't uh, we didn't go through too many too many questions or anything. But uh, yeah, the the guys we had who joined our session who were kind of we, we did it in two parts. Um, so we had uh, some good insight from the people who did it with us. Excellent. Have you been finding it? Yeah, good. Um, uh, I've certainly um, certainly enjoyed some of the some of the presentations have been really 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 excellent. I think um, in terms of uh, I, I like it when there's a you know when there's a good focus and theme. Um, the embedded finance concept very relevant, um, but uh, uh, you know the, the thinking evolves when you know when it is around one theme. I think you know the the, the stories connect, build on each other, um, which makes. Uh, Thanks for a pretty compelling, yeah. uh, compelling story, I think. Absolutely. Op open banking seems to be quite quite a theme as well this year. Yeah, it was at API Days London last year. It was the, the sort of the anchor theme. Um, uh, and uh, there were a lot, of, a lot of presentations about the progress that had been made or, and, you know, and the, and the learnings about what the two years or so of... Um, of efforts had had um, had meant, um, and then a lot of a lot of people interested in or, or talking about what was going on in other jurisdictions. That were it was sort of like everyone was looking over the shoulders of the UK um, to see what they could they could learn from and apply elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, so that, whereas this time, I think it seems uh, you know to uh, you know, still focus on the industry, but but talking more about these. Um, these different new business models and so on that are coming off the back of it, which is good. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Looks like a couple of people have joined us. So um, uh, we might just give it another another minute or so. Yeah. Is the sun shining there today at least, or is it still...? Uh, it's trying to put... Oh, actually, it's uh, just as you say that. It's... <laughs> peeking out behind um, uh, what is mostly a grey sky, but uh, they're kind of high clouds rather than that, you know, that English thing where, well, Irish as well, I guess, where uh, you know, it just sort of settles in for what feels like weeks at a time. Yeah. <laughs> I, always, I always enjoy explaining to people in, in the US and stuff, like just Irish weather conditions that are, even in Germany, like people ask me, what, what is the weather like there? I'm like, oh. It's grey, <laughs> a lot of grey. Yeah, it's um. I've only just moved back to the UK, having been away for a very, very long time. Oh, okay. So it's only only my now my second winter, um, and uh, yes, the 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 rain is um, is easy to forget. I was in Australia most recently, so. Oh, okay, I saw they they celebrated last night uh, in Melbourne. Yes, that's that's where I was living, and um, I have to say, I feel uh, I, I chose a. A good time not to have to be there i'm really feeling for everyone but yeah, yeah. So it's been 111 days one friend reminded me this morning um wow it's been really intense it's pretty much been apart from a four-week break it's been like hardcore confinement since march well i, I didn't realize until i had, had seen it in the news this morning i was like wow we didn't actually have a bad like we we were all right yeah it's it's been um yeah, and then while they were counting, like everybody I spoke to, every every conversation would start with they they all knew exactly how many cases they were on because all of the restrictions were going to be eased off when they were below five a day, and so people were going we're at ten we're you know we're at fourteen we're at eleven I'm like wow um, we're at like tens of thousands a day. Yeah. Um, now it looks like there's a couple of people um, who've joined us, and maybe maybe we'll get started. We're already ready at time. Um, so welcome again, Kevin. Uh, delightful to, to to have you here from from Fivetran as a uh, uh, a gold sponsor for the API Days London event. And you're joining us from Germany. Uh, for those in the audience, hello. Um, 
My name is Claire Barrett. I'm at uh, uh, APIs First, and uh, uh, it's a delight to um, uh, have a chance to um, have a, an open discussion. So for, for people, if you haven't joined one of the roundtables before, this is not a, a, a slide where uh, and Q&A at the end conversation. This is a uh, um, meant to be much more of a kind of conversational. I like to think of it as the equivalent of, um, you know, bumping into Kevin uh, outside in the uh, in the lunch queue at a at a physical conference, um, you know, or listening to a conversation that he's having with uh, um, with some others about what he's seeing in the industry, um, uh, some of the experiences that his uh, customers uh, are sharing, um, and taking questions from you. So. Uh, please feel free to use, um, if you're really brave, you can actually, um, and, and <laughs> it's the right time of year, unlike the person that joined us, was it in the session with you yesterday, or someone was in New Zealand um, at two in the morning. Uh, <laughs> but if, um, if you'd like to join us, you can actually join with audio and or video, um, or just contribute through the online chat uh, to the conversation. So um, uh, we're multi-channel. Um, and uh, so, Kevin, um, you chose uh, the topic on d data pipelines, build, build versus buy, or is it um, buy versus rent these days? I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm interested as to, um, uh, from your experience in um, scaling complex um, data environments, what are some of the, 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 the challenges? Why, why, why is this topic of interest to you and your, your customers? Yeah, a really, really good question. Um, it's I think certainly in the last year become or the last few years even become more of a topic um, as the kind of data infrastructure companies are implementing uh, becoming more complex and the amount of data we're dealing with. Uh, I think I mentioned this in our in our roundtable yesterday. You know, like the the world we were in a few years ago, where you had a lot less data sources you were working with, the the kind of end to end implementation you needed was was maybe not as complex. And you know, we've gone from traditional uh, relational databases to data warehouses. Now we're seeing data lakes becoming more of a theme. Um, and then all the kind of hardware middleware that's kind of bringing the data from A to B um, into these destinations. And I think, you know, with, with that increased amount of data and the amount of sources people need to connect, there's an interesting discussion around, well, you know, do we as a team, do we have the resources or the time to go and implement all these pipelines. Um, you know, if we're talking about, a, again, a startup who's working with a small number of data sources, that might actually make sense because, you know, the, the overhead is so low and the, the requirements are still quite small, but for the companies growing and even going towards the enterprise side, uh, that it becomes a more serious question because you have to start looking at how much time are your, is your data engineering team, your data analytics team spending on the maintenance of these pipelines um, are there more um, interesting areas where time could be spent where you say, okay, we're not going to custom build all these pipelines and now we actually want to maybe uh, invest in an off-the-shelf solution that's going to fit together as part of the puzzle. You know, we've got our, our data warehouse, we've got a nice BI tool sitting on top of it, and then um, we're using an automated data integration tool like, like Fivetran or some of the other tools that are out there uh, to, to feed all that data in. Mm. Well, thank you. Um, I know on your um, website, Kevin, there are um, a lot of uh, great little case studies that you've, um, uh, as an organization, brought to life with the different types of clients that you're supporting. Are there any um, good examples of uh, someone that you've been working with, you know, in, maybe in the last year or so that's um, uh, been going through, you know, that's actually seen this change um, and, and started seeing, but no, you know, what's that meant for them? God, I feel like I should I should have some <laughs> some <laughs> <words prepared. laughs> Sorry, but not an unfair question. Right? Lots of case studies. I mean, well, wasn't on the um, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't on the question <laughs> that we talk about, but that's the, the no, no. It's a good it's a good question. I think the, like the common themes I see from from all the, mm -hmm. the customer case studies I read through are uh, like or, or as me, it's like it, it shocks me sometimes to see how much time um, an engineering team or data engineering team can actually spend in a week just maintaining these pipelines. Um, and when you think of like a two or three person team, like some of the case studies you'll see on our, our, our blog as well, where people have put together their new stack with a BI tool, a data warehouse, their data integration tool like Fivetran, 
um, is how much time they were able to win back to actually start focusing on what the hell are we even doing with the data? You know, is it is it a BI use case? Are we trying to build machine learning models? Is there is there more exciting data products we can build on it? Um, and some of the numbers we've we've seen that our customers have given us is like a saving of around forty percent. Um, and you know, I, I don't want to make it sound too salesy, but that's that's quite a it's that's quite a chunk of time when you think of if you spend two maybe three out of five days of the week where. Uh, an API version changes, um, the schema changes, and you're you're constantly updating these pipelines to meet the needs of your analytics teams and and the the downstream teams who rely on that data. Um, and that can really stack up because I think we have um, actually maybe I can even share a blog post here. Um, some of our team in San Francisco actually put together. Some pretty cool calculations, just kind of working out some scenarios of what that could actually look like, um, and it's it's quite easy to calculate. And when you look at the amount of connectors, and I think again, like I use the example of a startup, you know, if you're talking about uh, you're you're bringing in a few ad based connectors, like you're you're talking about a marketing use case, you're looking at Google Analytics and Facebook ads and Twitter ads, um, it's really a small. Um, a small use case, but as you kind of extend that and you're talking about a mid to, to growth size company where you've got a hundred plus sources where you're trying to feed data in from, um, you know, one one of those sources breaks, you're, you're, you're investing a few hours trying to fix it, update the scripts and update the pipelines. And then you multiply that out by like, you know, a hundred of those and uh, you come to quite a, Quite a hefty time and time investment spent on just the, the the nitty gritty work and not the fun stuff. Yeah, and I, I mean, if you're, as you say, in terms of the fun stuff, there's an interesting, um, as well as the the, the the quantifiable monetary benefit, um, presumably for um, data engineers and and um, specialists. Uh, you know, what they sign up for is the fun stuff. Like that's that's the core role. Um, yeah. Certainly, there are, um, you know, I guess DevOps engineers and you know specialists who um, like you know automating processes and, and working in those in that pipeline maintenance. But um, I would imagine if it's forty percent of your role taken up on supporting you to enable enabling you to do the job that you're there to do, that must have a lot of impact on kind of your own um, feeling of satisfaction with the job. And um, and this is this is a skill set that's in high demand and. Um, you know, under a lot of pressure to deliver on priorities for a lot of companies. What 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 are your own experiences from? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a double edged sword. Uh, I mean, like I, I come from a software engineering background, so I've I've lived in the world where I've, in my own selfish interests, chosen to build versus buy because I wanted to use a new technology or I wanted experience with a certain technology stack or product. Um, but from a business sense, that doesn't always make sense. Um, but I think like if you if you take that approach where I've I've seen companies where they've invested heavily in building themselves, and what seemed like an exciting challenge for maybe the data engineering team to do it, then have them thrown into this world where they're now spending the chunk of their time, the half of their time almost just maintaining that technology stack, uh, mm -hmm. that then seems far less appealing than it was at the beginning. <laughs> um, and I think that's where you kind of go, okay, maybe we we should look at like buying something off the shelf. Let's let's automate and, and make this part of the stack robust and maybe focus on some other parts where we can innovate a bit more and, and maybe look at uh, focus more energy. And that's, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a, a experience I learned the hard way as well, even before before joining Fivetran. I wonder if it's like the um, the conversations I've heard people talking around, um, you know, in terms of the infrastructure management, you know, moving from when you know, as people sort of justifying the whole kind of cloud move, it was like going from servers being, um, what was it, pets to cattle and um, all of that kind of, uh, you know, change in, in ethos about um, uh, getting, you know, really slick on the uh, the engineering yeah. um, enablement capabilities. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Great. Um, we did get some questions from um, sent in to us, actually, when people um, registered. Um, one of the questions people asked about was... Uh, uh, probably, I mean, broader than, than than the data side, but they asked us about what was the most what you saw was the most overlooked aspect of API integration. Um, be interested from your perspective in um, 
uh, in the you know the data pipeline space is there is there something that people um, get the you know consistently get the or oh, if only we had you know known about um, the common theme um, that you see. I almost want to say documentation. Um, yeah. I think uh, you know a lot of the technology, like the, the advances we see in API development, like REST APIs as, as a standard. You know, we've standardized a lot of really good things around security, authentication, um, various parts of how you build good, robust APIs. Uh, but I think like the downfall always for me is is the API because at the end of the day, it's it's. You know, it's a, it's a technology you're working with. It's, it's a way to communicate with a service. But at the end, it's, it needs to be a human readable way to interact with it. Um, and that, that becomes the, the challenging part for us. I mean, you know, we've got over 100 connectors that are based off of APIs. We've, we've probably spent, I think, uh, maybe six to nine months building our NetSuite integration, for example, because, uh, and th this is nothing to do with, with their documentation. I can't actually speak to the NetSuite documentation, but just the complexity of how many APIs we needed to work with for that one connector um, and to understand how that API works was fundamental to us being able to uh, build our solution. And at the end of the day, any API you work with, you're the consumer of that API. So you need to understand as quickly as possible how it works um, and how you're going to integrate with it in the best possible way. So I, I think that, that to me is the, the area that's it's not something that can be solved by technology. It's a, it's more of a something I think we still need to maybe ingrain a bit further in in the, the culture of mm -hmm. AI development. Okay. Um, uh, thank you. No, no that's uh, interesting. Um, we also had a couple of um, uh, effectively kind of network infrastructure related questions. Um, I'm not sure if they were specifically focused on uh, at this workshop, um, but it would be great to, you know, if, you, if you've got any perspectives. Um, one question was how to best navigate large scale enterprise network infrastructure when you're developing APIs for the dev test prod. Um, yeah, that's a pretty loaded question. Um, I think there's a lot of, a lot of parts to that. Um, I'm probably not even the best person to, to answer that question, but my, experience with it um, has mostly kind of come down to security and kind of the governance around how you implement something like that mm -hmm. um, and how you expose that API in a, in a safe in a safe way because um, I think a lot of times you know certainly enterprise infrastructure you're dealing with a lot of firewall restrictions um, even a lot of our customers who build custom connectors to, to tie into APIs they're running within their own organization. Um, in some cases, you know, we need to go through uh, reverse SSH tunnels, um, things like that, that can give you as an organization the, the control over how that connection is managed. Um, and, and things like proxies and, and reverse SSH tunnels give you a bit more um, control over how that's 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 handled. So in, in that scenario, that stops Fivetran from talking directly to a database, for example, um, because it's going through through that element. Um, but yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a it's a monster of a topic. I think we could do an entire mm -hmm. session on. <laughs> yeah, I think we're yeah we're already at uh, at twenty past. It's uh, amazing. Um, I, there's a few more people just joining us now. Um, I. Just for, the, for anybody, uh, a couple of people have just joined the, the group. Um, do, do add any questions in uh, here with Kevin at Fivetran. And uh, um, he's, uh, in fact, we've gone slightly off our original topic of, of the build versus buy. Um, and maybe we could circle circle back um, to that. Uh, uh, what do you, what do some of the um, uh, kind of practical use cases that people are seeing. Uh, you, you certainly mentioned consumer marketing volume um, type of data um, analytics as being, uh, you know, a, a, a common um, uh, scenario, if you like, for, for your types of customers. Are there um, uh, are there examples in what I would think of as like the business to business facing customers, um, as distinct from you know the B two C types of markets? What sorts of um, uh, uh, have you got examples of where you've, you know, 
or even maybe maybe if it's not actually the industries but the particular uh, um, uh, you know where, warehouse uses where um, the, the the build for buy um, discussion um, or even even the the personas involved <laughs> yeah. um, from a ma maintenance perspective are the ones that are getting benefit beyond the, the data engineers that you've mentioned already. Yeah, I, I think it, it all comes down to the the use cases for the data. Like when I think we started as a company seven eight years ago, like business intelligence was the only thing we, we were thinking about. Um, we had customers who wanted their data out of Salesforce. They wanted to put it in a database or a data warehouse where they could um, start analyzing it and doing more with it. Uh, a lot of the customers that come to us kind of say, well, this is what we're doing today, but our roadmap says we actually want to start merging Salesforce data with marketing data to get a better understanding of what our salespeople do internally. Um, I mean, that's that's how we actually, Fivetran uses Fivetran internally um, from a B2B case. Um, then you've got, I think, you know, to, back to the, the B2C case, like a lot of retail e-commerce customers um, who are heavily reliant on competing online, um, even insurance companies or finance companies who uh, have gone, have kind of taken the first step, okay, we know what our users are doing on our website, we've got a good understanding of that. Now, how do we feed those actions back into how we change the product or personalize the product for them? So in insurance, it's kind of how do we personalize an insurance plan uh, before a, a salesperson has even evolved, or how do we recommend the right products based on trends we've seen you behavior and all kinds of things. Um, and to, to do all of those things, you need data that that's stuck in siloed places. And we've kind of gotten gotten a lot of companies have gotten as far as they're they're analyzing quite a chunk of that behavioral data, but then bringing it all together where you now do a lot more meaningful work with that data. Um, and that's, that's, I think, what's uh, exciting for me. Like, I think I was looking at some new slides we were putting together for, for a presentation yesterday, and uh, it, it shows all the connectors we've got now flowing into all the use cases where, you know, we, we partnered with a company called Databricks, um, which is a data, data lake, our first data lake integration. Um, and now we're kind of starting all these conversations around data science um, and people not only building dashboards and analytics, but how are we building models and, and training all kinds of data sets to do, uh, to do new stuff with, with the same kinds of data. Um, so that's, that's, I think, what's kind of driving our roadmap as well, is just mm -hmm. seeing those use cases expand. Yeah, that's exciting stuff. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, that will presumably mean you're expanding out, uh, you know, new skills into the team, new um, capabilities and those things, I would imagine, for you to support that growth because, um, you know, that's uh, I mean, complementary adjacent disciplines, but uh, um, presumably the level yeah. of yeah. to, to the build versus buy topic, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's moving so fast, like we can't, no company can find data scientists quickly enough. Um, I think everyone's scrambling to find you know, more specialized people, machine learning engineers, uh, advanced analytics specialists and, and data scientists. So uh, for a lot of companies that actually come to us, it's, it's, it's part of the, the, the competition for, for talent is we're, we're also gonna implement Fivetran because we have limited resources and they need to be doing more high value things than building pipelines. Um, they need to be working on the models that feed off of that data. So that's, that's like, these are things I had never thought of in a, in a build versus buy argument, but it, uh, you know, it comes down to how, how, what position is the business in um, yeah. to even do one or the other. Yeah, I had, um, uh, I heard that in the UK, um, someone was telling me that the most in demand graduate skill um, from university at the moment, like most graduate uh, degree is physics. And um, there's something like, I can't remember how many thousand, like, I can't, somebody mentioned a number like, 6,000 shortage of physics graduates. And it's more than maths because it's because of data science requirement because physics is a yeah. maths. Um, so it was really interesting. So when I was talking to friends, kids who were trying to decide what to choose for college, <laughs> yeah. physics could that's, be a good one. <laughs> that's certainly not a bad route. I mean, I've, I've read some interesting articles and, and books on it as well because 
you've you've got these other industries like like the finance industry and Wall Street bringing in physics majors and graduates to to do all kinds of things that physics students never thought they'd end up doing. Um, and I think that's that's where it becomes a challenge. It's not just a, a career in, in science, it's physics uh, and, and computer science and all kinds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's definitely not a bad route to go down. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, I'm, um, uh, I have a particular um, passion and interest about, um, in, you know, growing diversity and talent in, um, in the feeder pools from, um, I, I actually, Look after the um, Women in APIs Global initiative that we've, we've got oh, going. Apart, apart from other things, um, and uh, have always um, looked back at, at, at you know from high school or primary school even, um, but certainly high school and, and feeders into university to try and increase um, participation. Um, and it's one of the things that we try to do in at conferences like this as well, um, give people a better opportunity to um, get out, contribute to the conversation. Join in the chat, then, <laughs> speak, yeah. write. Is, it, is, there, is, is there a website for it, or is it like just a? Uh, yeah, I can put that on the. Um, uh, it's on. The, put that in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind uh, doing a bit of uh, free publicity. I'll probably need my glasses on. It's on. Yeah, it's great to see though. I mean, I I by chance I think stumbled into uh, technology as a. Uh, as a potential career at the age of like 14, 15. Um, very cool. That's amazing. Yeah, join. We're, we're, uh, we're an inclusive group. <laughs> You're always welcome. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I'm conscious there are still a, um, some people online. We've got two more minutes. Um, if anybody, um, maybe I should just ask ask the audience, you don't need to ask a question, um, but how have you found this session? Um, just by way of a bit of feedback. And helpful, interesting, um, useful. How are you finding the conference? Maybe even a more broader question. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so um, just while we're then um, summing, summing up, um, how else could um, anybody get in touch with you, Kevin, if they've got uh, questions specifically about Fivetran? Have you got any other events that you're involved in today that people could? Not today. It looks like the last one. You've got a, you've had a busy, busy conference already. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm just going to throw my own email address in here as well. Um, I mean, I'm on the sales engineering team, so I can give you more so the maybe the unbiased uh, <laughs> technical insight on, on Fivetran. Um, but yeah, feel free to uh, certainly message me if there's any more questions around uh, five trans data integration, uh, the APIs we work with. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Kevin. Thank you to the audience um, for joining us and uh, have a great rest of conference, everyone. There's uh, um, still a lot of other um, uh, really great items on the agenda. And uh, oh, thank you, Renata. Um, <laughs> uh, perhaps you'd like to join our Women in APIs or would like, like a human aspect. There you go. I think there is. Um, this should all be about you. you know, we are all people. People behind. And in fact, our API days, women in API days, um, our brand is very much about the humans. And in fact, the API days conferencing overall. So, uh, um, yeah, here we are in this disconnected world, but we all get to connect yeah. with humans. Even, even more important now. <laughs> Isn't it just? Isn't it just? Yeah. Um, fantastic. Um, uh, yeah. See. You. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.